is this 2007 Roof RT12 on Doug DeMiro's Cars and Bids just a souped up 997? Or is it the best Porsche 911 Porsche never made? Also, how much is it worth? Let's find out. Big Nerds is your daily YouTube car game show where we predict the online auction results of the most interesting cars on Bring a Trailer, Cars and Bids, Haggerty Marketplace, and more. It's just like the Price is Right game show. Play along and see if you can beat the nerds. I mean, talk about heavy hitters tonight. Uh, this car is on cars and bids. So Doug DeMiro is swinging for the fences on this one. He has brought us... Uh, whoo, boy, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting a little, a little, a little, a little, a little I, I'm not going to mention what I'm getting right now, but this little, is a 2000. Connected. Yeah, it's boy, the desk is, uh, all right. The 2007 roof RT 12 coupe. Holy bejeezel. Look at this car. Of course, it's a six speed manual. Of course, it's all wheel drive. This is a real roof. So as the W9 VIN, uh, this thing has a Metzger. These are built with a Metzger 996 turbo engine. Uh, of course it's built to a 3.8 with all this stuff. I mean, these have 650 freaking horsepower from roof. Look at this car, gaze upon it. I don't know, man. That last car, the of course the uh, the R5 uh, is is really cool and and rad. Uh, but this is just like this is such a super car that I feel like you could actually get out and own and drive and love, even though it's a gajillion dollars. Um, holy cow! Uh, I mean, this is this is just something that I mean. I don't know. I, I guess I'm fanboying over this car. I love 997s. They're, I mean, it, the thing about you look at something like this, if you don't know better, it just looks like another damn Porsche. Um, but you start looking at the details. You see that, you know, the intake in the back, the the, the special wing, uh, that little bit of a nose. I've only had the opportunity to drive a, fruit, a few roofs, and they've been air-cooled roofs. I've never driven a water pumper roof, uh, but I'd sure love to get behind the wheel of this one and hope I wouldn't die. Uh, Ian, what do you think of the R12 being sold out of Texas by a, uh, by a dealer? Uh, this is a one owner car. It was brought in. Uh, it's been stored. It's ready to go. Ready for you. Ready to get on those apexes and be adjacent to them. Oh, yeah. I'd be very uh, far <laughs> from adjacent, I would think. <laughs> Uh, in this thing, getting sideways uh, real fast, right? Yeah, I have never, I've never driven a roof. Uh, I assume that they're terrifying, though, uh, from everything that I've I've read about them. Um, but yeah, it's painfully cool. Yeah, I, you, you look good in it. You got the hair for it, right? Thanks. I mean, it's yeah. not quite, uh, it's not quite ZZ Top. <laughs> um, Michael and Neil, what do you think of the roofs? I mean, it's it's one of my favorite nine elevens, which is the nine nine seven. And then they've just taken it and, and you know, uh, dragged it through the garden. Just gave it everything awesome. So, yeah, I think it's amazing. I don't know what else. It, weirdly, it, I, to my point earlier, the interior does look a little dated. <laughs> you know, there's just something <laughs> right? about it that's yeah. a little, you know. But, um, <laughs> but I mean, you know, that's uh, I wouldn't kick it out of bed for eating crackers kind of thing. So, right. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. And I'm, I'm all about it. I'm all about it, as they say in Canada. All about it. Mental. You, I know you've driven Rami's roof. Uh, have you ever gotten behind the wheel of a water pumper roof? No, and actually that was going to be my hot take was, uh, Rami, Rami, JP <laughs> and I need you to get this <laughs> so, so we that can we can make it, a yeah. movie yeah. about yeah. it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, this is, I, my pants suddenly up tight in the front. This yeah. is friggin this this i i and, and and it's not just us the nerd herd everyone is just actually taping out taping time to type out the you know just one let one word adjectives of oof wow this yeah, yeah. there's just nothing not cool there, about this car everything about this car is perfect yeah I, I have a question about these actually so do these get sort of the like gran turismo nostalgia boost um, cause we're kind of in that age of like the, the Gran Turismo stuff because Porsche didn't license to video games. And so all of the Porsches were always called roofs. Mm. So <laughs> does that generation like having like nostalgia for roof turbos or roof Porsches, does that like factor in to, to the our, market our resident millennial Wade from tech daily, uh, is not in the building tonight. So we would have to ask him, but I think that's a good take. I, I, I suspect it does. Um, you know, 
there's something about this color too. The white is just one of the best colors for the 997. It just sets off the little bit of black and the, you know, and it's got the white, the color matched bat seat backs uh, with white looks so good. Uh, the center console, some of the trim is white. It's like you see red cars do this all the time and it just looks awful, but there's something about white that you can add those accents and it just, it just adds so much to the car. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't, there's, there's nothing stopping this car. I mean, it, that's the thing about 911s in general is that they kind of, they cross over so many different audiences. Uh, the old boomers love them. The young guys love them because of the video games and the movies. Um, and it doesn't seem to matter if they're air cooled or water pumpers. 911 is a 911 is a 911. It's kind of maintained a certain design language. Like you said, O'Neill, Corvettes don't maintain that. Line- they don't have that lineage, uh, whereas all 911s do. And this one just, if you don't know anything about a 911, uh, you're going to look at this car. It's so iconic that you're going to know it's a 911. You may not know what a roof is, uh, but you're going to look at this and go, hmm, is that special? Uh, and, you know, by the way, Michael, have you ever seen uh, people taking uh, 991.2 steering wheels and putting putting them in the uh, in the interiors of 997s? It looks great if you haven't. I have seen it only because I had a Panamera and that was going to be an upgrade that I did because I hated my steering wheel in that car. That's right. You do. Um, you got rid of the Panamera. I remember when you bought I that. Did. You I stayed at a, my I house. Got, I, got a, <laughs> I got a Chevy Volt uh, yeah. to replace All right. it. All right. Is um, that more or less reliable? Different story. Another show. <laughs> more and I, I dig the 115 miles a gallon versus the four miles a gallon the Panamera got. Yeah. Um, if I had to pick any nits, I don't love the wheels on this roof. I don't love exposed bolt uh, wheels. Um, I don't That's, know. They, that they seems, seem like yeah, a, it's a, a good call, right? A, it, this seemed like a, it just seems like a, somebody put aftermarket wheels on for whatever reason, even though I'm sure that didn't happen. I just don't love these particular wheels. Um, They're very period correct. Yeah, I think that's, it's something weird that like Roof and Gambala and Andile, they all did that. They had the single step deep dish. They don't have the steps in them, right? They'll do a three piece that doesn't, it's just like one flat dish. Mm -hmm. They look so much better if you have like a beveled dish that's more, I don't know, if, especially if you're going to do rivets. What well, do you think? Well, just also yeah, like, I, I think would swap those and swap the steering wheel. And that would be what I would do to this car. And keep them because they're both roof. Uh, they're, they're real. They're real right. roof. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's a one owner car. So I'm assuming came with that car for sure. I just yeah. would do something else. I also just don't think black wheels on a white car usually work, right? Like they just sort of disappear. They just look like negative space, you know? I happen to love the black wheel white car thing. But oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's yeah. It, race it, car to me. But it's like black and chrome and it. So yeah, it's I'm, I'm actually, I'm kind of with you on that one because like just put a, just a slight change of color. Otherwise, yeah, it just becomes these just giant empty spots in the center of the cars, you know, just a slight accent. And yeah. that really does get black wheels working on a white car. I think these are swapped, by the way. I'm looking right now. I just Googled roof RT12, and I don't see any cars that have these wheels. I see much more typical roof, you know, five-spoke wheels on most of the the cars. Yeah, the actual roof five-spoke wheel would be look so hot, and they do on 997s. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They look way better to me. Does the listing say that it's modified? That's what I'm kind of looking for right now. Uh, and I don't see anything about that. You know, the, the one thing about the actual roof wheels is they're surprisingly heavy. Oh. Um, yeah, because they're a big, you know, monoblock, single chunk so of wheel. According to the initial listing in the ad, it says factory equipment includes a limited slip, 19-inch super legeras, carbon ceramic yeah. pads, bodywork, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I think the thing to do with this car, if you were going to buy it, own it, and drive it, is to swap the wheels, swap the steering wheel, put them in a box in your uh, garage, and Wrap leave them in a very thick, yeah. cushy, mushy towel. Yeah, exactly. Don't put them on eBay. Just keep them until you uh, maybe one day sell the car. But why would you sell this car ever? I mean, this 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 is like the, all the car. If you had a one supercar solution, this could be it, right? I mean, come on. All right, so we've gushed over this car. Now it's time to get to the uh, nitty-gritty. How much do we think this car will bring? 
Um, so I guess I'm first and I have done no research and I should have, uh, been watching what the nerd herd says, uh, cause they're pretty good at this, man. I, I'm going to go, gosh, I'm going to go 400 $50,997. Type that in right now because none of us are going to remember that and you're in charge of the spreadsheet. Uh, well, I, you know, luckily Deeb has been on it. Okay, so is he so. typing that in? Deeb, yeah. did you get that? <laughs> Deeb, is, uh, Deeb is in the nerd herd hanging out. My partner who's usually on the show, he has a stupid, stupid face and it's all messed up so he couldn't be on. Uh, no, we are uh, we are rooting for Deeb to get better. He's got a, uh, he's got a, yeah, he's got stuff. So he's got to deal with it. Uh, he'll be better, I'm sure, by the next episode. He got my bid correct. Uh, Ian, what do you think? Oh man, I am. I'm. I'm a little bit in shock from your from your number. Uh, to be honest, I I don't know much about these cars, so oh, I can't. I mean, well, let me tell you this: it's already at three hundred four thousand right. dollars. Uh, with and it closes tomorrow on cars and bids, and it's not uncommon for cars and bids to peter out yeah. the day before, whereas BAT it keeps going, right? Yeah, I'm gonna say uh, three twenty five because I right can't. I can't imagine that this is worth two Renault five turbos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mental. What do you think? Oof. Yeah. So on that, I am going to have to say it's going to go for three eighty nine five. You don't think it breaks four hundred? I. <sighs> And I'm going to sound like you, and I hate that. Mm. Uh, I don't think it's the season for it to break 400. Yeah, that's a good call. I think in spring it gets five. Uh, all right, Michael O'Neill, your turn. This is just colossally lower than I was expecting uh, this to be. Uh, just just from a quick little Google, some of these are selling for $900,000. Um, there was a 17,000-mile one that sold for 900 k This one only has, what, 31 on it? Uh, 31, let's see here. 31,500. Yep. So I was going to go, uh, my original bid, and I'll stick with it. It was going to be $739 or $739,000. Um, but yeah, there's only 15, uh, 15 hours left. Um, there's no way it's going to like add another 350 in a day. And, well, and hold on. That's not, into, I mean, if it were BAT, we, we regularly see doublings, uh, you know, hundred percent increases on the last day. That's not uncommon cars and bids, not as common, but it happens. Uh, so I don't think I'm you're gonna, too I'm crazy. Gonna, I'll pair mine down to five thirty nine four hundred. Okay. All that's right. My, you are guess. not the low, you are not the highest bid in the nerd herd. Uh, looks like family guys thinking it's going to be 600. So he's with you. I, but look, I, I, I think the seasonality is a big thing. Um, and we are in a weird time. There are certain cars that are bringing like blue chip cars are still bringing big money and this qualifies, right? Um, if you've got 600, 700, 900, a million dollars, uh, to spend on a car, you have the money. You don't really care what's going on with Bitcoin or, uh, the magnificent seven. You don't care that, you know, Tesla just took an ish the other day. You're like, whatever, I got 900 what, grand. What, I'm buying what, that thing. Cause why, why that. would those, what, what, what is uh, the economic reality that those things? Oh, might I'm not drinking. So I can't play the drinking game of inflation. <laughs> Go ahead and hit the button. <laughs> We have a little drinking game, Michael O'Neill. That's uh, that's our when anytime I say inflation, oh, like, drink? everyone drinks. Yeah, go for it. You should you should have been drinking from the get go. Everyone should have. I, I shows have, better. Ian was drinking. drinking. Since the get go. I have been on I have Coke absolutely Zero. Been drinking since yeah, the good get-go. man. You guys are all smarter <laughs> than I am. I don't have my partner Michael Deeb, so I have to actually pay attention. Uh, can't get all drunkard up on my own show, which is what I like to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it would. It, I mean, look how bad this is. Uh, <laughs> imagine you're, you're if I a, were impaired. <laughs> you're a very good host, JP, and I'm uh, very critical uh, of hosting. But you're very good at it. I'm trying so my best. I'm trying my oh, best. I feel angry. warm and cozy oh, in these hands. I feel warm uh, and cozy. just oh, just oh, to, oh, to bring oh, us back to it. Right at as we're about to move on to the next car, Randy B throws a six oh one into the bed. Yeah. Randy's my guy, yeah. man. He's the one I usually cheat off of, and he didn't put a, post a bid. Thanks a lot for going late, making me look bad, Randy. Jeez, Louise. All right, um, all right, guys. Let us know what uh, what you think this uh, a magnificent roof will bring. Let us know in the comments below. Hey guys, I gotta tell you about our friends God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you gotta call our friend Steve at God and save yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for. Gotten Porsche of Las Vegas.
Hey guys, you're probably looking at your watch and wondering if bid nerds will ever end. So you better talk to our friends at Our Smiths to make sure your Rolex, Tag Heuer, AP, or any fine timepiece is in tip top shape. Our Smiths, fine Swiss repair. You know, when, when people talk about the roof cars, I always think about uh, the early air cooled cars. Um, I am a lot less familiar with the cars that featured the Metzger engine like this one did. Uh, when I look at that front end, um, uh, it reminds me of what they did to some of the Caymans that more recently. But uh, to see this generation, this era of roof car, it seems like a lot of the details on it are kind of new to my eyes, like those really unique um, uh, air inlets in the back. Uh, fenders, the rear quarter panels um, are really interesting. It's got a raised uh, spoiler. There's some aftermarket wheels here. And then a really far extended deep front chin spoiler. This is a, a very interesting car. I To me, uh, JP... Honestly, if you saw this car on the road, would you just look at it and go, ooh, there's a roof? Or would you think there was a car with like a roof logo on it and, and not believe that it was real? This car would have fooled me all the way down to uh, a conversation with the driver. Do you know what I mean? I don't know, man. I mean, look at those. The, the holes in the fenders are the, what do it on the rear haunches. Um, yeah. that is, that's, that's tough to fake. I mean, you are yeah. not the ones on the, not the ones on the back, the ones on the top of the fender there mental. Can you get the picture? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can't see them from that angle. You get, there you go. You can kind of see them where the, uh, yeah. where the wind. Yeah. Those, yeah. those intakes on the back, uh, you, <laughs> that would be an incredibly expensive mod to do to yes. a regular Serious old business. 996, um, to make yes. it look yeah. good. There is Serious business. JP, you had mentioned when you were um, introducing the car that the Metzger engine in this was sourced from a 996. Correct. Uh, which uh, which is really interesting. You would think that it would have had the 997 turbo motor. But anyway, here we go. Our car was in Dallas, Texas, showing 31,500 miles. Uh, and this car features a modified turbo Metzger flat six that puts out six 150 horsepower through a six-speed manual transmission. So this is serious kit here for this car. Uh, with all that in mind, um, I went with $380,000 thinking that this car uh, might not go much further than where it was at while it was listed. Uh, JP came in at $450,000. Ian said three twenty-five, dollars which was under me. Michael O'Neill said $539,400, which was over John. And then Mental came in at $389,500, which split the difference between me and JP. So five bids on the table. But what I thought was really interesting, JP, if you remember, the herd was all over the place from like not another bid all the way up to like $900,000. Wasn't uh, – do we have the the things mental to look? I don't I see one for nine, looking. but it looks like Randy was at six oh one. Um, Anthony, yeah, yeah. Was, you know, Anthony um, was at four twenty six. Buddha was at five hundred. Uh, family Guy six hundred. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think Michael O'Neill was saying that he saw one sell at auction that went for like nearly a million bucks. That was also this era, which then really threw me off because at that point, then I thought. I had hung myself out with my with my bid. I said, maybe this car is going to go for a lot more than I thought. Turned out not to be true. Our car sold, JP. After, actually, our car failed to sell on 17 bids at $380,012. Meaning I missed a Yahtzee by 12 bucks. Jeez. How funny is that? You wouldn't yeah. have gotten it so, anyway because you weren't actually in studio. I don't know if we can give you a Yahtzee yeah. from, yeah. from your sick well, my, bed. But my bid was in before <laughs> all of you guys. So I, I, I definitely deserve a Yahtzee because I, I put my bid in before I even got to hear what everybody else had to say. <laughs> um, JP, car failed to sell. Um, first thing we have to look at, and I, I, you know, we wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't. Was this car on the wrong platform? I don't think this is a platform problem. I think just really? like I said in the last segment, I think it's just a dip. I think it's just the time of year. I think it's just, you know, would it have been better off? Uh, I, well, I guess the question really is, what do you think the reserve was? Uh, and then we can start to say, all right, do you think it would have been done better on cars or on BAT or even P car market? I don't think that cars and bids is the, would have been my choice for sure. But I mean, we've seen cars and bids get some big numbers. If this guy had a, I don't know, $600,000, uh, you know, 
reserve, then yeah, maybe BAT would have been his place, but they probably wouldn't have given it to him uh, this time of year. PCAR market, you know, I, I definitely would not have trusted this car for PCAR market, even though we've seen them pull uh, some pretty big numbers for some crazy rare cars. This definitely qualifies as a weird Porsche. Um, you know, yeah. and, and, and Doug DeMiro is known for the weird stuff. Uh, and this car is going to get a lot more visibility within that particular audience than it would being buried on a BAT uh, day where there's a lot more people, you know, there's a lot more eyeballs, uh, but there's a lot more stuff to look at. I don't know. Uh, Mental, what do you think? I, I'm going to go with the assessment. I, I still say that this was the correct platform. And as your point to, to BAT, a lot more eyeballs on BAT, but I, I would argue that there's a greater percentage of buyers on cars and bids. Maybe not mm. at this realm, but people go to cars and bids because they actually want to get something weird and interesting. And this definitely, as you said, checks all the boxes. I'm going to go with, yeah, it's a seasonal thing. Uh, Ross put in the uh, comments just a second ago that if this had hit 450, he thinks it would have sold. I tend to agree. Yeah, I mean, the reserve price is really the big thing on a car like this. And if, it, but I mean, if it were like, I mean, everyone in the herd was pretty much higher than us, right? I mean, there was very, yeah. there were very few people that were lower than us. And I, and knowing that one of these has hit almost a million in the past, I mean, th there's a lot of cars that have been really crazy, but you know, supercars are definitely taking a hit. Does the, here's a question for you guys and for the nerd herd too is, does this, does this constitute a blue chip Porsche? Because blue chip stuff, when it comes to Porsche and when it comes to most of the marks, blue chip cars are, are what's still bringing bigger money. Um, does roof qualify for that? It does have a roof VIN. So this isn't just a 996 that's been done up with a bunch of roof stuff. What do you think, Dave? I, you know, it's so hard. Um, just in the last 10 years, JP, the value on roof cars, the older vintage roof cars has gone through the roof. And so now, you know, uh, G body and 964. And well, hold on, hold on. Did you just say it went through the roof? Well, yeah, I did. <laughs> Freudian slip. Freudian slip. I, I'm a comic and I don't even know it. Mm. But um, yeah, they, they did. They, well, they went. Yeah, I don't even know what to say. You took my line away. Um, sorry about that pun. But uh, yeah, they have gone crazy in value. And, uh, and and we're seeing cars, especially the turbocharged cars from those earlier air cooled generations, regularly bring a million dollars. This car, I couldn't tell you anything about. I went to try and check values really quickly just to see if I could find any comps for um, a, a Metzger powered roof car, um, and it was very difficult to find values indeed there's no categories in any of the listing guides for the roof cars. So by that rationale, they're so niche, they almost don't qualify. They're almost too garagiste, too much. Uh, they're too artisan, too boutique. There's not enough numbers of them uh, to, to really have good valuation guides. Um, so, John, I, I don't. it's hard to give you an answer. I don't know what to say. Like, I want to give you a concrete answer. I don't think I can. So I would just say, no, I don't think this qualifies. I just think this is a little bit like the flying Hawaiians. If you wanted a, a maxed out white Metzger car, Oh, you could buy that if, and you had like an unlimited, like a blank check, you could buy this roof. But otherwise, you know, who else does this appeal to? It's it's almost too niche. So I don't I, I think supercars have a broad appeal for a bunch of people that don't own them. I don't know that I could say the same thing about this car. I don't know if I could put this in the same category as Flying Hawaiian. I mean, we love Dave, but this isesn't a one off, you know, uh, th this isn't a resto mod. What's that? Yeah, but it's but it's. But it's, but it's got as a VIN number. It's, you know, it's, it's That's built cool. by roof. It's yeah. flying Hawaiian takes an old car and hacks it up and makes it a new thing, which is great. Don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, Anthony is like, Hey, roof is more blue chip than singer. I, I, I tend to agree generally. Um, but, uh, but I do agree with you actually that it is, is obviously a very niche car. Uh, here's the thing. But, okay, but so, by all, huh? Yeah. By all those arguments, then this car was on a, the second biggest platform in the country and failed to make 400 grand. And some of us think that this car might be worth five or 600,000. So I, I, you know, I understand what you're saying, but the, I feel like the proof is in the pudding. I, I just think this is a hacked up. This is a hacked up 911. We're that's not even way, sure whoa, if the donor that's car absurd. was a turbo. Just, it's, it's not a donor <laughs> car. I mean, it, it's, I mean, it, it's, a, it's, it's original factory car from roof. 
It's right. not like they buy a, a 50,000 mile car and rebuild it. They get a brand right. spanking new car from Porsche and build it. And that's why it gets a VIN. Right. But was this, did this car start life as a Carrera or as a Carrera four or as a turbo donor car? And then they went and lifted an engine from a different generation car, you know, like, yeah, but that's what so they do I, with all the roofs. I mean, and okay. I mean, it's yeah. Okay. Um, I guess. Yeah, no, I mean, I just, I don't see this being something considered any, I mean, this is a factory car. This is a factory roof car. Um, but it's not that I'm necessarily disagreeing with you, Deeb, in the sense that I think, I agree with you. This is crazy rare, crazy niche, but the idea that it was just like a hacked up car, I mean, Singer takes an old car and hacks it up and makes it something new and special. Roof doesn't right. take an old car and hack it up and make it, make it something special. It takes a brand new car, a brand new powertrain, brand new everything, not just components, but yeah. everything. Thing. so no yeah i i mean look it's cool but like jp when we talk about 944s uh they'll never be expensive cars because they're not expensive driving experience um this is supposed to be a half million dollar car the performance envelope is there but if you sit in the driver's seat of this car do you feel like you're in a half a million dollar car or you feel like you're in a fifty thousand dollar carrera i just this car isn't doing it for me and i i don't know how to explain that to you uh other than the way i just did you know yeah, that's like saying if you got into a GT a 996 GT2, does that feel like a $50,000 car cuz it looks like a 996 turbo? I'm going to jump in here and say that where you where you guys are dancing around is the crux of the problem. Mm, is what's that? JP as a deep Porsche file, you know exactly what this car signifies. And while Deeb who loves all cars recognizes that while it's special, he's not getting a $400,000 experience or a half million dollar experience set behind the wheel of the car. And the, yeah. there's a, there weren't enough buyers out there who think like JP and too many of them who think like Deeb and the car didn't sell. Okay, yeah. now you're both Take crazy. Because the, look, yeah. this is this is absolutely a, f a half million dollar buyer experience. You get in this car. I mean, from a performance point of view, from a touch point point of view, everything about this car says... Half million oh, dollar supercar. says car. absolutely, but does the world know that? Yes, um, I think it's just the dip. I think if when the, if when this car comes back to market, which platform will it go to? Will it go to P car market? Will it go B? Yeah. yeah, you think it'll go to P? You don't think it'll go to B? It's going to end up in the chum it bucket should, for seven hundred and fifty thousand. <laughs> exactly, it should go to BAT. But if I was a betting man, and you know we do a show like that, sure, uh, I would bet that we would see this car in P car market. Um, JP, when you know we talk about like Singer hacking old cars up, but when you sit in a Singer, you feel like you're in, uh, you know, you're you're like in Nirvana. Same thing like, with a roof. No, that's what I'm saying. Look at the driver's seat in this car. You, there is nothing behind this. But when you're sitting in that seat, there's nothing that lets you know you're in a half million dollar car until you hit the throttle. And yeah. they did the gauges and everything, you know. And it just, but the, it, to me, it's not enough to to. Um, uh, to, to endorse the value that they're expecting here. And that's why I think it just, to me, looking at it, it looks like a modified turbo or even a Carrera. Well, what do you guys think in the uh, comments below? Should the seller have taken the money and run? Or do you think they're better off to try a different platform maybe in the spring? And if so, how much more money do you think this thing will bring on a different platform? Do you think it'll bring $100,000, just $50,000? $500,000 more. Do you agree with Deeb that it's just a hacked up 996? I mean, that's kind of ridiculous, <laughs> but whatever. Deeb, what does Deeb know from 911s? He's not, a, according to Mental, he's not really a Porsche file. And I guess I, I finally agree with Mental on something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let us know in the uh, comments the way, below. Hey guys, thanks for watching this clip of the Bid Nerds podcast. Play along with us live every Sunday and Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m. on YouTube and see if your bids stack up to the rest of the nerd herd in the chat live. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you on the next episode. Nerd! Get those nerds!